Oh. I don't know when the whistle became a thing, but here we are, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, welcome, everybody. So, crossing the streams, we're so excited to have you back for episode 24. Can you believe it? 24 episodes. Woo! Wow. Oh, man. We, uh, we received uh, an update of the Nielsen ratings last week. We are number one in 1,642 countries. 82, 80, 82 states call us their, their favorite streaming show. Nice. We're, 80, strong, we're strong in Eritrea. Yep. 82 Same. states. 82 How many of those states. have internet? Uh, at least 40 of them. At least <laughs> 40. 40. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Crossing the Streams. And we are excited. We've got some amazing TV stuff to share with you today that you should be streaming. Oh, it's going to be good. But as always, first, I'm going to kick it off to John Sullivan, our guest, who's going to sing the theme song. Take it away, John. Here's the story of some lonely fellows who spend way too much time watching TV. All of them have jobs and friends. Well, not really. Just between you and me. They made a <laughs> live show out of their hobby. Every TV watches TV watches dream. Jeff and Raul, Sal and Bob. And then there's Howard. They call it Crossing Streams. And then one day they went live on all the platforms. You could hear the people laugh and shout and scream. Still can't find another word that rhymes with platform. But man, can we cross the streams? We cross the streams. We cross the streams. That's the way we do it here. We cross the streams. Dude, that was dude, awesome. Dude, dude, dude. Yeah. <laughs> A flawless right. finish. Flawless finish. It's flawless strong. finish. Oh, so good to have you all back. I'm your host, Jeff Dwoshkin, and these are all my co-hosts. We're all hosting together. It's a fun time. And uh, so we're going to go over some amazing shows here on Crossing the Streams that you should be streaming. Collectively, we have 600,000 hours of TV watching experience between us, and we're ready to share it to you for free. Absolutely free. Almost. Dude. If you saw an ad asking for money, ignore it. This is free, <laughs> completely free. I, sh I should not have put that ad out there. That was you my mistake, <laughs> and I'm sorry. <laughs> that is Zach. That was his personal Venmo. You might see a link to my OnlyFans, but sorry. Please. Please. <laughs> uh, I'm already on there. Ron, I'm already on there. He is your only fan. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, let's introduce uh, our first guest, uh, John Sullivan. John, I, tell everyone tell everyone all about you. Uh, so I live uh, outside Boston. Uh, kind of why I'm here, I guess, is because I'm on Twitter. Not as John Sullivan, though. Uh, I run this page, Depressed Darth, which people probably some have heard of it, some have not. But if you're a Star Wars fan, you'll probably come across some of the tweets. Uh, also on Instagram. TikTok, Snapchat. No, so anyway, it's a press start. It's a fun Twitter page. Uh, kind of with the Darth Vader kind of taking a look at the sort of this world with sort of a depressed slant, kind of the type of guy he is. If you sort of look at Darth Vader, he's kind of comical. So it's got 700,000 followers, losing some every day because I have a lot of bots, but so life goes. So here I am. I'm excited to do the uh, Crossing Streams podcast. Welcome, Very brother. excited. Thank yeah, you. So, Welcome. so uh, John and I met, I think it was five years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we were both tapped by Gillette for a Rogue One. So to put the time frame into perspective there, uh, a Rogue One event in London at Pinewood Studios. They flew us both out. That's where we met. John was walking around in his half cocked uh, Darth Vader guy. <laughs> well, I, I honestly I, I couldn't I couldn't fit the suit over on the plane so I was like I can get the helmet over the gloves and I wore like a sort of tweed blazer to look like I was in London. <laughs> <laughs> and, and in all honesty it, it wasn't very funny either. <laughs> <laughs> but we got a chance we got a chance to hang out together at yeah. Pine Studios and uh and on a bus together and chat. That's really up. cool. So, and uh, you can hear my interview uh, with John, uh, episode 37 of Live from Detroit. 
the Jeff Dwoskin Show, a very popular episode with John, my fans, and John's mom. She's very... <laughs> yeah, she was a big fan, although she told me I said like too much. <laughs> that was like the one thing she said. I was like, thanks. <laughs> like a teenage girl. Right. I was like, that's all you got, right? Nothing else was there. That's it. In the in the George Lucas edit of the episode, I'll remove all those. <laughs> all right. And, and a fan favorite, we have uh, Tim returning to the show. Howdy, howdy. Yay, Tim. Plug yes, your podcast. Uh, so I, I host two podcasts. There's Focused on Ford. We talk about overcoming life obstacles and challenges and how people move forward past very heavy and, and uh, emotional and mentally taxing things, uh, and sometimes physically as well with that. Uh, but then I also host a show called The Funny Science Fiction Podcast, and I follow John on on uh, on the Twitter sphere uh, as Funny Science Fiction. But uh, yeah, so in Funny Science Fiction, we talk to all kinds of different people, writers, actors, directors, all over the the sci-fi superhero and fantasy world. Uh, and sometimes they're not even uh, inside the world, but they just have deep appreciation for it. Like we've had Jeff on the show and, and he was, he's a big Marvel fan. And so we talked about some, you know, some of the stuff that he appreciates and what's going on there. And uh, like this week, our, our posted episode is with uh, Jed Brophy, who was Nori in the Hobbit mm. in the Hobbit trilogy. And he was also, um, I mean, almost pick a character, uh, uh, you know, the side characters in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So he was in all six of the movies. Uh, so pretty cool. Wow. So that that's us. That's what we do. Very cool. Awesome. And uh, you and John, you can talk after. You can have John, I'm sure, would love to be on your podcast. I'll be on your <laughs> podcast. Um, oh, we're, oh I, we're, we're going to talk. Don't worry. So as soon as I knew <laughs> that, that you were depressed, Darth, I was like, yeah, we're talking. So <laughs> maybe, oh, maybe Zach, Zach's a big Star Wars fan. He'd love to grab you. Oh, I'm a yeah, huge yeah. Lord of the Rings fan. Uh, did, were you able to get any of the uh, any of the cool, you know, set pieces or not so much? Uh, <clears throat> we didn't really talk so much about that, but we did talk about he owns one of the Rohirrim horses. So he actually has one of the last ones um, whose racing name was actually Frodo. And he talks about that in the show. Uh, he talks about some some different cool things. Uh, he was like, so in Lord of the Rings, he was one of the uh, Nazgul who was chasing um, uh, Frodo after he got stabbed on the horse with yeah. Arwen. Yeah, with Arwen. And, yeah, yeah great so, he's, so he's one of the guys that's on the horses behind them. And he explains guess, what their motivation was to try and actually touch the horse. It's it's pretty funny. I, I don't want to get right, away. You got to listen to the episode. Wait, wait. You got the guy who is the guy behind the horse behind the horse? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he does say that uh, that was one of the most incredibly dangerous things he's ever done in his life. Because here they are. It's in New Zealand in the summer. It's 90 degrees hot. They're wearing all this black stuff. And they have like a slit about yay big that they can see out of. And those horses are, are going at top speed. That was an actual chase scene on horses. So it was pretty cool. And uh, Jed's just one of the coolest down to earth dudes I've ever met in my life. And we had so much fun with him. That's awesome. cool. Awesome. And Lee actually listened to our episode, John. Big fan of our episode. Thank you, Lee. Oh, yeah. That was fun. <laughs> Fred says, hello. Hello, Fred. Hello. All right. Hello, hello Fred. Fred Lee. All right. Well, we've got tons of pack stuff, tons of fun stuff for you today, ladies and gentlemen. Last week, though, just to recap, we talked about the West Wing. We talked about oh, Kath West Wing. and Kim, and we talked about Upload, and this is a robbery. That's amazing. If you haven't seen those, check out episode 23. That's last week's episode on our YouTube channel. Just search the Jeff Dewaskin Show on YouTube. They'll all show up. This week, we've got a jam-packed thing. We're going to talk about Norseman, the President, Knight of the Comet, and the World According to Jeff Goldblum. That are, those are our amazing things that we're going to show. We're going to take um, a second to remember Charles Grodin, uh, the great movies that he was in. Such a bummer. Such a bummer. Uh, the Midnight Run being one of my favorite. Uh, movies that he was in with Robert De Niro, classic. Yeah, that is classic. classic. Yeah, well, unfortunately, I'll... you didn't have you didn't have the cover box of Clifford up there. We were talking about that uh, before the show started, which is easily my favorite uh, Charles Grodin movie. Uh, probably my favorite Martin Short movie. I have no idea. It is a creepy little movie, though. But uh, it was upsetting <laughs> to hear about Mr. Grodin. 
I am just the biggest fan of Charles Grodin. I was really wrecked hearing this hearing this news. Uh, seems like old times with Goldie Hawn and Chevy Chase, and, and, and just an amazingly hilarious Charles Grodin is one of my very favorite movies of all time. And I'll just throw this out there. Uh, I love scary movies. I love horror movies. And Charles Grodin had a featured part in Rosemary's Baby. You may you may remember really? that. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So he was a he was the doctor. He, that... he was in King Kong. He was in The Great Muppet Caper. He was mm-hmm. many 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 things. Also, uh, I made all the images yesterday. But Paul Mooney passed away. The mm. legendary comic Paul Mooney, hilarious on Chappelle and. Just uh, shout out to both writer of them. He, uh, Mooney was also a writer for Pryor. Yeah, for Pryor. on the he Pryor show, look. and he helped do some of his uh, his stand up writing as well. So, hmm. Hmm. so anyway, many many great losses this week, um, and uh, we're excited uh, though for the part that everyone everyone's favorite episode, everyone's favorite part of the show, the Netflix. <laughs> I do I do well luckily I got to go right after the death of Charles Roden so I think that's good enough uh I'll work on a song this week um but if for some reason you don't know what I'm doing I have a self-imposed problem and my problem is that I have to watch what Netflix calls the top 10 in the U.S. What this means is that of the 75 million people that have Netflix, what they watch the most on one day is what I watch the next day. So the metrics works. Whatever they watch, I watch the next day. So let's see what's on the top 10 for today. Ugh. All right. So at number 10, it's only five. I barely, I barely. No, no, unfortunately. <laughs> but, uh, for, fortunately, it's not on there. Uh, so uh, number 10, it's been on for five days now. It's a television show from Netflix uh, called Halston. And it is uh, stars uh, Ewan McGregor, directed by Daniel ben- Minahan. Um, if you don't know anything about Halston, it tracks the, his leverages. Uh, he invented the name into a worldwide fashion empire that is synonymous with luxury, sex, status, and fame, literally defining the era. Um, it is a decent show uh very well acted very good show if you know anything about the actual house that you know how weird his life is um i will say 100 that the actor who plays liza minnelli her name is krista rodriguez she is phenomenal and when liza minnelli is the most sane person on the show you know that show <laughs> is cool so uh check it out it is a beautiful show it's five episodes so it's tight and uh i, I suggest it uh, number nine. I, I do. I, I do want to say the like, uh, episode fifty-three of my podcast. I talked to Shannon Wilson, who plays. Uh, she's a, one of the stars of Snow Babies on Amazon, mm-hmm. but she plays Bill plays Pullman's, Bill Pullman's wife. Yeah, Bill Pullman's wife in in Halston. So I also interviewed I, her on Focused on Forward, talking about her children that were both uh, both of her her son and her daughter were born directly into the uh, <laughs> NICU. Yes, she wrote and a the, book called the Yeah, Little Tina. We're having yep, a yep. Shannon off right now. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows Shannon Wilson about? Yeah, uh, not right. Shannon not off. <laughs> uh, I mean, I love Halston. So if you want to be on my show, let me know. Uh, so number nine uh, is <laughs> Love, Death, and Robots. It is a television show. It is in season two. Uh, this is a collection of animated short stories that span various genres, including science fiction, fantasy, horror, and comedy. Created by Tim Miller. Uh, this is, like I said, season two. It has eight episodes. Um, I love season one. I love season one with such an amazing passion. It has everything you can possibly think of. It's like if Black Mirror had more heart. Uh, this being season two, it is the follow up, so it's not as good. Uh, it still has the same kind of depth as far as the animation level goes and the stories that they're telling. I think season one has uh, a lot more going on for it. But if you do like season one, you will like season two a lot. And I definitely suggest Love, Death, and Robots. Number eight. Uh, one of the worst pieces of trash I've ever seen. Uh, this has been on for four days now. It's called Jungle Beat the Movie. Uh, I'll tell you, it's about a homesick alien who crash lands a spaceship near the colorful African jungle. His new f- a man, his new animal friends need to get him back to his ship before, um, you know, something a space conquer. It doesn't matter. This thing is awful. Uh, it is directed and written by Brent Dahls. Apparently, there's a universe of these things. One's called a uh, monkey in the trunk, and it's about a monkey and an elephant that do not speak. When this movie starts, it is about a monkey who distributes bananas to all the animals of the jungle, including animals that don't eat bananas, that's when he finds out that he can talk. You can figure out the rest from there. Uh, number seven, uh, Coco Melon. 
208 days Coco Melon has been on the top 10 list. I don't understand why parents just don't pick their kids up and talk to them more. Uh, number six, uh, I Am Girls. Uh, this is a beautiful movie. Uh, it's been here for five days now. I Am Girls. Uh, it's about a special crimes investigator who forms an unlikely bond with a serial killer to bring down a global child sex trafficking syndicate. Uh, directed by Donovan Marsh, right, uh, written by Wayne Fritz John. Uh, stars Erica Wessels. I'll say that this movie is... <sighs> It's about important things. Just this movie is not important. Uh, it is a disturbing film. It says a lot about the evil in the world, especially with sex trafficking, especially if you have a lot of money. And if you want to have 10 to 12 year old girls, how easy it is for you to get it. Uh, the problem is that it, there's terrible acting, terrible music. Uh, and the only drama that they put into this whole thing is in the last 10 minutes. I watched the trailer of this and was horrified to watch it. When I watched it, it was boring. So um, yeah, honestly, if you have a movie that's called I Am All Girls and it's written directed by men it's probably mm. not good uh okay number five uh the mitchells versus the machines it's a movie we talked about last week i still 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 love it please watch it on uh, number four startup it's a tv show we talked about it last week don't watch it uh number three uh jupiter's legacy tv show it's fine don't care uh number two upshaws <laughs> it's a new tv show it's been here for seven days now now this centers around a working class african-american family in indiana and they struggle to make it work and make it right without any blueprints. Ha 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 ha. Uh, it's created by Regina Y. Hicks and Wanda Sykes. It stars Mike Epps, Kim Fields, and uh, Diamond Leons, uh, as well as Wanda Sykes. Now, when it comes to Netflix series and comedies, there's literally a 50-50 chance that it's going to be funny or laugh track terrible. And we knew about the one with Jamie Foxx, and it was awful. This one is actually good. I giggled a couple times. I laughed a little bit. <clears throat> now, you have to like Juan Sykes. You have to like Mike Epps. Now, if you're into those people, you will absolutely love this uh, this show. Um, I think that there's uh, 10 episodes so far, and I I'll watch season two. I'm, I'm very happy with it. Uh, anybody else check the show out yet? No. No, no? but cool. I, I'm a big Wanda Sykes fan, so <clears throat> I... Uh, yeah. Uh, I would do it. The um, yeah, the Jamie Fox one again. Let's all consider this a warning. Don't even. <laughs> no, don't. I, yeah, Wanda Wanda Sykes is cool. I used to bartend in Westchester, Philadelphia, and she was uh, a, a mug club member at the bar that I worked at. And she would come in all the time, and she's very very funny. I love Wanda Sykes, and I, I like this. Uh, but number one. The Woman in the Window is a movie that came out about five days ago in here. It is about an agoraphobic woman living alone in New York, and she begins spying on her new neighbors, only to witness a disturbing act of violence. Directed by Joe Wright, uh, written by Tracy Letts, based on a book by A.J. Finn. This is Amy Adams and Gary Oldman and Anthony Mackie. So when I saw this cast, I was like, boom. Easy. Grand slam. Um, this movie was supposed to come out a couple of years ago, but then through everything else, it kind of kept getting delayed and kept getting delayed. And Amy Adams wanted this to be like her big thing. Uh, but it, it really is just if you take Rear Window and add Shutter Island and sprinkle a little bit of on the train onto it. Uh, unfortunately, it is just kind of boring and lackluster. Um, I would suggest Rear Window or Girl on the Train <laughs> or, or uh, anything else, really. Um, this movie is just so boring and slow and I have such a problem with that because I love Amy Adams more than life itself uh, and she really let me down and I'm very sorry about I'm that. I'm sorry but to hear that. I, Amy Adams is good. Did you like Girl on a Train? You liked Girl on a Train. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's interesting. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's the top 10 of Netflix on nice US done. Today. That's been the <laughs> Netflix <laughs> metrics. I think I have a, a list of dis disclaimers Ooh. that Ooh. I need Zach to read. Holy crap, he was going. <laughs> yeah, dude. There's like a okay. you see me right. typing out. I'm usually I'm usually so angry typing. I'm like, ah, I hate this thing. This is so stupid. Ah. And I, look at my, I look at my notes. I look at my notes. I'm like, don't don't read any of that. That's so dumb. Uh, oh, my, my screen froze. Oh, cool. Well, ignore the Norseman in the corner there. I clearly didn't turn that filter <laughs> off. But uh, up next is the present. Ron, yeah. taking us through yet another what looks like foreign film. Another foreign film. This is my thing, man. If you, you know, if you don't like subtitles, don't listen to anything I'm about to say for the next eight minutes. Uh, yeah. So this is a film I found because it it won an award, uh, a British award for uh, best short films. And I, I don't know about you guys, I, I love short films. Uh, I love the Academy Award list of short films. I love uh, all the European short films. So to me, when you when you win a BAFTA award, that's kind of a big deal. Um, this also interested me, and this is where I'm going to kind of very carefully enter the world of politics in, 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 uh, in this next part of the conversation. This is very much a political 
short film. This is about the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, which is uh, a, a very um, uh, important moment right now as the conflict is raging in real life. Uh, so this this puts a, a lot of nuance um, to the Palestinian narrative. Uh, I, to be uh, in full disclosure, I am a very much pro-Israeli uh, Jew here in Detroit, right? Uh, but I will say this, and one of the things that it's very rarely talked about is that this is at the, its core a very human uh, conflict. Um, we talk about uh, geopolitical issues. We talk about Israel. We talk about uh, you know the uh, impact on the United States and other uh, countries around the world. But it, there aren't a lot of stories that talk about the individuals on the ground on either side uh, that are impacted by by what is truly out of their control and has been for more than seventy years. Uh, and so this is a twenty four minute short film about a simple Palestinian man trying to buy a gift, the present uh, for his wife uh, and how um, the uh, just the exercise of crossing uh, from his town in the West Bank uh, into another town in the West Bank through through an Israeli checkpoint, how that impacts his life and that of his of his daughter. It's a very it's a tear jerking story. It's 20, like I said, 24 minutes, but they take you through all the, the realms of emotion uh, that are very human about uh, life uh, in this experience. I will say that part of why I wanted to, to share this film, even though it is, uh, you know, politically not the same narrative that I would want to share uh, about this conflict is that it's, it's very well done. And I think does a, an excellent job of, of bringing this conflict down to, as I said before, it's very human element to it. So it, it, it is uh, produced and directed by a woman named Farrah Nabulsi, uh, who is already uh, uh, won a short film award uh, previously. So you, it, it's a well-produced event. Um, it, you know, all of the cast and crew of this are of Palestinian descent, which is interesting since uh, half the actors in the uh, film are Israeli, right? So, but in actually, uh, in actuality, they're, they're not Israeli. They're the, the entire cast and crew is Palestinian. So, um, so this is, you know, it is political. It is, I'm sure some people would even call it propaganda, uh, and it is. It, it makes it makes a point. But I will say, um, it is a beautiful film, and it is a, a tear jerking film. And whether you are pro or anti, or no matter how you feel about this, uh, it is impossible not to come away from these 24 minutes and not feel for just the common people uh, that are impacted on both sides of this just this terrible conflict that no one seems to have an interest uh, to solve, uh, least of all the United States. So I, I do begrudgingly recommend uh, this film uh, only for its context uh, and do not take sides either way uh, on, on what it, um, you know, where it should lead you in terms of your opinion about the conflict. But just in terms of the raw value of this film, it's an excellent, well-produced film and I highly recommend it. Yeah, I'm gonna watch it tonight. Sounds great. Yeah, yeah it sounds really good. Well, I think uh, anytime you can introduce an, uh, the human element into a story, especially when you have a conflict of any nature, if you can break it down to the human element and how it affects us as a, you know, in our humanity, I think that's yeah. an important step to to resolving anything. Maybe you know, maybe this won't have the effect that that they're hoping for on a grand scale, but maybe if you know, if yeah. it can if it can affect a few people. You know, then maybe it, it gets headed in the right direction. It's very well acted. It's not a documentary at all. It's just a, it's just a story. It's an acted, well acted, well conceived story of a simple okay. family, right? Uh, and, and that's I think that's ironically because it's not provocative in the ways that you would normally think a, a Palestinian Israeli story might be because it's because of its simplicity. In my opinion, it makes it even more powerful, uh, and that's why I, I recommend it. Well uh, presented, yeah, Ron. And Simon's stepping in for Casey. You're Casey <laughs> today, Simon. And you, and <laughs> you convinced you, Ron, I think, just solved the entire conflict during the hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, thank you, Ron. Um, cool. All right. We are going to get to John now and his wow, Norse. Okay. Heck of a beer. Uh, that is a heck of a beer. Is that James Woods? It looks like it, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does. No eyebrows or anything. Yeah, James was from Casino. Like, 
a few years ago. Um, so I came across this show randomly. I was actually watching the show Vikings, which I think is on like History Channel or something, which is a great show. It's literally straight down the middle what it's like to be a Viking. I think they kind of take some history. Anyways, that's a different show. Why am I talking about it? So I came across this on Netflix. And I'm like, oh, similar show, Norseman. I'll check it out. And I'm watching it, and they kind of, it starts off with a boat basically going down this river, and these like Vikings have these people they've captured who are going to like basically work for them and be their people, right? So, and right away you can kind of tell by the dialogue. I was like, oh, this is a comedy. This is not what I'm looking for. I was looking for more of like a drama. Anyways, you start listening to the dialogue, and it's like, so it was originally done in Norway, like whatever their language is, Norwegian. I don't, I don't know if there's Norge, a language. If, right. Uh, so like, I, I can't even name the directors because I can't pronounce their names. <laughs> and it's like all the actors are all Norwegian. So, and it's, it's very like straight to the Vikings. Like everything, the set is very, it's like very real Viking. So they capture this guy from Rome who's an actor and he just can't get over like this viking culture so they sort of like smash together like this roman guy who's been taken captured as they like went and pillaged and so he's talking about basically like wait a second like you guys don't do this you guys don't have running water wait you haven't discovered this like so it kind of goes back and forth so then anyways he teams up with the uh chieftain's son who's like not a, a viking he doesn't like the the any little rough stuff or anything like that. He's like into art and stuff like that. So anyways, the whole show is three seasons and I, I like, I can, I can't really liken it to anything. It's like almost like similar to the first, the, the two British office, two seasons without the sort of interviews. It's sort of that dialogue that's kind of back and forth. <laughs> They're foreign. So it's like, they can almost get away with a lot more. Like I feel like if you had American actors doing some of this stuff, they'd be like, no, like I can't, get away with doing that so i honestly i've watched it three times over now three seasons it's like one of those shows i'll put on late at night as i'm going to bed just to kind of watch and like i'll still laugh out loud at the show like it catches me sometimes like it is and i rarely watch like comedies necessarily like i'm more of like a drama documentary or like old movies or whatever and this just kind of hit me and it was like it's it's I, I I'm going through now like the third time on the third season like coming up on the end. So it's called Norseman. I can't name an actor. I honestly it's created by these people. They originally it's amazing because they originally did it in Norwegian and then they dubbed it in English and can still do comedy in English and in Norwegian. Like their their timing in English, their second language is like through the roof. It's like I can't believe like the level of comedy they are hitting with this show strongly recommend so wait did you did you say there is an original version in the original norwegian so they did it in norwegian and i think netflix might have discovered it or something because it says it's a netflix show and then i think they might have bought it and all the actors must be able to speak both languages because yeah it's originally in norwegian and then they did a second time around in english and it's like i honestly don't understand like it'd be like trying to make jokes in your second language like spanish or something like that and like getting everything right and timed to right for it's it's a brilliant i, I show. swear they all, norway finland sweden they all freaking speak english it's amazing yeah uh, i went over there for my, I, I went over there for my honeymoon and pretty much everybody was like wherever and they speak went. it well yes 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 but yeah, i came across americans I came across this show uh, when I was doing my Netflix thing and it popped up on one of the top 10 one day and I put it on and immediately I was like, oh, Vikings, whatever. And then after like the first two people speak, you're like, wait a minute, what, what is this? And then like, uh, like two, two episodes later, you're like, okay, I actually love this show. Uh, I, yeah, every, everything that John said is a hundred percent accurate. This show will catch you off guard with actually how funny it is. And it yeah. keeps you going because it is foreign humor, but it still just all works. And it is the most novelistic style of new humor I've seen. So how, yeah, I, I, how long are these episodes? Uh, uh 20 minutes maybe it's like, a, yeah. it's like average yeah. sitcoms, but there's no laugh track or anything. So it's really like, like and, and like it's like they keep out doing themselves like it's yeah. just I, and it's, so funny, it's, I, it's great I, Sorry, I will i will say that you may want to check out the 1978 movie the norseman <laughs> starring lee majors <laughs> 
What is that? Sure. It's, it's, it's what it's, comes up when I'm trying to find your show on IMDb. I, uh, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start this tonight. It's on, uh, it's on Netflix. Yeah. Yes. yeah I'm going to check yeah, it out gonna, for yeah. sure. I'm going to go check out it's, the first episode tonight before I go to bed. So it's the guy, the Roman guy who's an actor. He, he convinces the village basically to give up all their metal for their weapons to build an art installation. And they're like, <laughs> what is an art installation? He's like, we are building an installation. <laughs> and it's like. Yeah. <laughs> these, you know, Vikings from the 1300s trying to co- bring a concept of an art installation into a Viking village. So he builds this big metal thing that's like ridiculous looking and he's like, look at my installation. And they're like, I just don't. It's like, you know, these people can't read like what is an art installation? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. Really. You know what? It, so here's I was looking up uh, a reason I couldn't find it in IMDb. It was originally called. Viking, Viking, at Viking, at Gan, V I K I N G A N E was Norseman. They're calling it maybe that's the original title. I don't know. It had a different name. It has oh. a lot of consonants. Yeah. It's so, uh, yeah, I can't pronounce a lot of the weird letters in these people's names. I can't pronounce. Oh, yeah. A moose bit my sister once. Really? My- <laughs> a moose bit. <laughs> <laughs> I say that all the time. I have been waiting to be able to say that. I'm like, I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. waiting. I'm sure the rest of the guys don't even know what you're talking about. It's um, Monty Python. Monty Python. <laughs> Holy Grail. It's in, it's in the credits of the Holy it's in Grail. The opening credits. Moose, <laughs> moose, moose, moose can be nasty. Right. My, my sister once got bitten by a moose. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's uh, the review I found of, of the show online says that it's uh, Monty Python meets Game of Thrones. Huh. Okay. Right, like yeah. the the, the set is like they must have spent a lot of money on the set. Like the yeah. like they've really done it to like everything they do is you can tell from that era because it's the Norwegian show. So they're like clearly studied Viking history and are like, okay, these people would have this. So it's not it's like the set. It's, it makes it so believable, and then the yeah. lines are just so ridiculous and the concepts are so ridiculous that it like kind of blows up in your face. Hmm. Yeah, I hundred percent I agree. Like when you watch it, you're like, there's so much money spent in the show. It's a, is it a comedy? It, it really is a comedy. Okay. That's because like, yeah, like I said, the sets are like, it might as well have be like a real like Hollywood motion picture of a Viking right. set and then just comedic shenanigans. It's really, yeah. really good. Yeah. So uh, this is essentially Vikings with laughs. Very well done and markedly funny, entertaining and timely. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's, it, uh, I always like when something just, ca- it, it caught me off guard so much. Like I wasn't really even paying attention. I'm like, <laughs> Wait, this is actually really funny. I yeah, yeah, yeah it was good. Yeah, nice. well, if you, if you like shows that take place in 790 AD, this is for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice a job. good one. Nice, nice job, John. Checking that out for sure. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah. You are welcome back anytime. All right, so uh, okay, I'm going to take us back to the 80s. I was watching this movie recently. And uh, it was a favorite of mine from way back, but uh, Night of the Comet, a 1984 film. And it's uh, sort of a science fiction comedy horror film. Have you seen it? Who has anyone seen it here? No, but can I just ask from the cartoon graphic there, was that Linda Hamilton in the middle? No, it is. uh, This movie stars in the middle is... um, is Catherine Mary Stewart. You may recognize oh. her from The Last Starfighter. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Sure. This is Robert um, Beltran. He went on to uh, Star Trek, um, the one with Janeway. And this is Kelly Maroney is the cheerleader. Um, mm-hmm. She was in Fast Times at Richmond High and the yep. classic Chopping Mall. Um, Kelly Maroney was on the one, the one in the cheerleader. I interviewed her on, on my podcast. <laughs> so which, I write, which, uh, which uh, episode? Uh, episode 25, <laughs> how to survive an eighties movie with Kelly Maroney. So, um, so this is, this is one of those movies that I remember like watching all I had, when I revisited, I immediately remembered it. Cause it was one of those that was always on cable. <laughs> it was always on cable. It's sort of like a zombie rom-com. Okay. So, it takes it. Um, it actually has a, a pretty good Rotten Tomato score, still seventy nine percent, and uh, it's considered like a cult film. It's considered a cult film, and so what happens is the idea of the film is that the comet, a comet, is passing by that hasn't passed by in sixty five million years, and what happens is when everyone's out, 
it wipes out humanity, right? Except for, of course, the stars in the movie, which happen to be sisters in different places that are protected by what we think is steel or something like that. And then there's a subplot where there's scientists who are aware that the comet was coming and knew what the impending imp impact was. But for some reason, when the comet actually hits, left the ventilation system open in their layer and thus was impacted by the mm. comet dust or whatever. And, um, and so, yeah. So the director, it's funny, like has a little kind of his own little Easter eggs that he kind of puts in the movie. Like when they're, they're in this, it takes place in a movie theater and they walk by an old Clark uh, Gable um, movie poster that's called red dust and it's, it was a real movie from the 30s, but everyone who got impacted and killed by the comet just turned into red dust. So it was like just one of those things that you didn't even, wouldn't even notice. I didn't notice it till like my third time. And I, and I was looking at it because in the beginning of the movie, Catherine Mary Stewart is the star. It's, it's, it's basically like two awesome badass women, right, that are left and they're just, you know, taken out, you know, so it's really, really cool. It's a uh, female driven. And then Robert Beltran, who he's recognized from Star Trek um, Discovery, I think is Discovery. He um, uh, kind of stumbles upon them. He's a survivor also. And so they're all survivors. And um, the uh, I'm trying to remember where, 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 where I was going. With <laughs> so, oh, so what happens is they they end up getting caught by these scientists who are trying to find the survivors so they can take their blood to make an antidote to save them. So the scientists who were supposed to be saving humanity and just, you know, mm -hmm. become, they're the enemy and all that kind of good stuff. So it's really funny. Oh, so in the beginning, the, the one character is playing Tempest and the, in the, the joke in the beginning, she's playing Tempest and it's Reg, Reg, her name's Reggie is winning all the things on Tempest. And there's one DMK. Number six is DMK. <laughs> who the hell is DMK? You know, that's anyway. So, at the end of the movie when it's just them and they save these kids from the scientists and the one sort of forms this quasi family and there's this silliness where they're the only ones there and um, they're going to, they won't cross the street unless the lights change and Kelly Maroney's all alone because her sister got the last guy in her <laughs> the right. And this car drives up this Corvette or this uh, um, what's it called when it doesn't have the top. <laughs> Top. Convertible. Convertible Convertible pulls up and Kelly Maroney gets in. They drive off. His license plate is DMK. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's like it's just kind of funny. But um, so anyway, it's 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 a fun movie. It's just one of those fun movies where maybe the plot doesn't make 100 percent sense, and, uh, you know, but it, but it makes 80 cents, <laughs> if you know what I mean by that. And but it, it's a fun uh, zombie. You can actually watch it. This probably is one of the streaming services that has it for free. One of the off ones, not like the main ones, but it's also on YouTube. You can actually. So is this is it thing. like uh is is it like nudity and that that whole kind of genre too? There's some uh, one scene where it's like there's you know down to like underwear, you know, like a bra. I'm watching, band, but like, I mean, like you know, all these tonight. '80s comedies. <laughs> but it's it's fine. It's because um, the two stars, Catherine Mary Stewart, Kelly. Maroney, they're badass, you know, their backstory is their father was a military guy, so they, they're they good with the Uzis and all that kind of stuff. And it's just it's just kind of, it's not like a zombie where they're like a total die and come back zombie. It's a different kind of zombie, but it's meant to be a comedy also, you know, with like two sisters and, oh, you always get the guy and it's the last guy now. And, you know, what do we do? Let's go to the mall. You know, <laughs> we go to the mall. <laughs> you know, what do you do when, it, when there's nothing left to do in the world? But it's an enjoyable '80s romp, I would say, and I, awesome. I definitely, definitely recommend just kind of finding it. And if 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 you remember it from what I'm saying, it's worth kind of watching it. It holds up. It holds up pretty good, actually. As a, as a fun movie, there's actually I was reading that there were talks to to kind of remake it and stuff like that. But uh, as, I never as, saw as they do, it. as and they do, it was with like everything. on a revolving loop back in the day, and. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Oh, and the soundtrack is insanely good. The soundtrack also is got all the great songs from the '80s. It's just, it's a really good. It's a fun movie. It's, it's fun as far as like those '80s throwback movies goes. When you mm -hmm. kind of watch them, you know, a lot of movies back in the day not as watchable. But this one, this one was pretty good because the story was good 
you know, today they'd go much deeper into the scientists and it'd be all that kind of thing. And, and there's a, there'd be more zombies, you know, because I think they didn't have a huge budget, you know. But in terms of all that, it's definitely uh, it's definitely good. And again, Catherine Mary Stewart, she was in The Last Starfighter. She was Maggie, the uh, Alex, the, the girlfriend, the main girlfriend. And Kelly Maroney was uh, the cheerleader. If you watch any of the, the, uh, previews of like um fast times ridgemont high she's in all the previews as well um that's yes zombie rom-com zomcom <laughs> so it's a fun movie i just wanted to share it since i had watched it it's it's funny because uh you know i uh, i've got three daughters now all teenagers and and uh they're just shocked by the the blatant sexism and, and inappropriateness of some of the movies that we consider just classic 80s movies uh, like as an example, sixteen can uh, we, they saw sixteen I, candles. I watched it the other awful. day. It's I, I, there's I, a lot of bad stuff in that movie. Like I, I never just, really thought about it, but it's just it's well, just yeah, because yeah. yeah, right. That's just the way a lot of the eighties played out. Yeah, so yeah, they the stories don't age well. But uh, but this one, the the two main are women and they're badasses. So I bet your daughters would. There you would go. It's empowering. Yeah, this one's Jeff. Awesome. <laughs> Jeff, I have a question for you. Do you have a hard time watching movies like that when it's not around Halloween? Like around Halloween, I am up for any movie like that, even bad 80s horror movies. I just like to watch a lot of horror on Halloween. If it's like off season, I just really can't like get into it. <laughs> so seasonal. Like, seasonal. John is seasonal. I'm John seasonal. is seasonal. I, you know, I, would you watch a Christmas movie now? Uh, I would not. I can watch Elf. Out, Elf. I'll watch Lethal Weapon any day. Yeah, I can watch. <laughs> uh, I can watch Elf anytime. That movie cracks me up. I don't. Elf, I don't. I don't understand. I, Christmas Vacation any day of the week. Any mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Die Hard any day. Something Die Hard about for horror sure. movies. Though, like I don't feel like getting like around Halloween. That's kind of when I kind of want to get scared. Like the middle of the summertime, I'm not want to want to watch like a slasher flick. You know what I mean? I want to be like yeah. October, kind of leaves are changing, yeah, yeah. kind of spooky I'll, out. I will tell you, John, right now, if you have Showtime, which I I don't know why I have it, but I do have it. Uh, for whatever reason, the movie Hereditary is on like all the time. And, and this movie, this this movie is, is like, the, it's, what's is that? that? Irish, is that the Irish one? No, but Zach knows exactly what I'm talking about, man. Mm. It's, it's, it. You have to see it. It's really popular with with teens and, and young twenties, but yeah. it's uh, it, but it's on all the time, and it doesn't have to yeah. be Halloween to watch it. It's an Ari Aster movie. The guy who uh, right. Midsummer. It, it is weirdly terrifying. <laughs> it's terrifying. It's oh, yeah. I loved Midsummer. I loved Midsummer. Yeah, yeah imagine he made, that he with made uh, this one. Yeah, with uh, Tony Collette and just a really just disturbing young little lady. Uh, <laughs> it's really upsetting. <laughs> yeah, John, really upsetting. You, won't be, you won't be able to sleep for a couple nights after this one. Yeah, so the weird thing is I, I don't go genre or like uh, timely. I try to find very bad movies. If, I, if I'll read a movie and go, oh, that sounds awful, I'll put it on. And sometimes it's a horror movie. Like there, I watched The Darkness, the Kevin Bacon movie. Oh, Anybody right. seen that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, what an awful. That thing's terrible. so bad. That was yeah, in his they, period of a bunch of dark, a bunch of bad movies in a row. Yeah. So that movie, he actually Googles, he in the movie, he Googles, can autistic kids speak to ghosts? And you're like, Duh, this movie's crap. Uh, it's like five years old. It's so bad. But uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't think that I like horror movies any specific time, but I like bad movies all the time. Yeah. Hmm. But sometimes I feel like bad movies are so bad, you're like, I can't even go an hour and a half into this. It's so bad. Like there has to be some sort of general... Yeah badness that it's so bad it's funny when it's kind of just straight bad it's like i can't go on hour 20 with this my what? favorite bad movie of all time that i think is the greatest worst movie of all time and i'll die on this hill grease 2 with no. grease 2 is it, it, i mean that's always rated the worst movie ever made, isn't it yeah yeah uh, where i thought see, you I thought you were gonna go sharknado on me but i oh uh, no. I, no see Star. grease 2 you can watch all of it. Like it, it's it's a bad movie, but you can have it on till the end. I dare you to put Battlestar Galactica on, <laughs> at, or not? No, 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 no sorry, sorry. No, 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 no Battlefield no, Earth. No, Battlefield Earth. Yeah, I dare you to put oh. on Battlefield Earth and finish that yeah. thing without yeah, having like a neck. Cr I hate Impossible. that movie. That that's, movie that's, to, to Zach Wise, the worst movie. 
I think that that movie should be put on in prisons to the worst of the worst criminals mm. and like force their eyes open, make them watch it Ugh. all the way start to finish. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't wish Battlefield Earth on anyone. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, Tina is here. I uh, love a good Tina. soundtrack. What's Tina's this? Uh, just finished. You know, like Tina's hereditary. Uh, let's see. Uh, j- uh, just finished watching interrogation. You should watch the first episode. All right. Well, uh, we should uh, DM me and you can come on the show and talk about it. Now, Grease 2 is uh, actually the best, worst movie ever. Tina, Tina, li- Tina likes my middle aged swag going today. <laughs> yeah. You do have, like the sweater <laughs> thing going. And <laughs> yeah. At any minute, we're waiting for Ryan to go, get off my lawn. <laughs> yeah. It's like a day in the neighborhood. <laughs> He's like a young Mr. Feeney over there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Nice. Let's, uh, let's, let's go to our last show Yay. for the episode, The World According to Jeff Goldblum. I love Jeff uh, Goldblum. Uh, let's see what we got here. Tim, this is Tim. Tim this take is me, it away. yes. All right, so this came out in 2019. It's on Disney+. Plus. Um. So it was one of those things that when we got Disney Plus, it was like, oh, we got to see what's all on there, right? Um, because I, you know, you hear you I heard that this show was gonna be on there and that show was gonna be on there. So, you know, I'm sitting there, I'm going through it, going through it. And I love Jeff Goldblum unabashedly. Um, he's quirky as hell, and everything that you have seen in every movie that he has done, the way he pauses and enunciates and um, that's not him acting. That's Jeff Goldblum. And that is in every episode. There's 12 episodes. Each of the episodes run uh, average from 24 to 30 minutes. And so what the whole purpose and the point of the show is, is that he goes around and he looks uh, at all these different everyday things and kind of examines them, tries to figure out, um, you know, why people are are so into them. Like, for instance, uh, the very first episode is about sneakers. And, you know, he talks to a bunch of guys who are sneakerheads and, and, you know, why they get so into it. What's, you know, such a big deal? Because to Goldblum, uh, shoes are shoes. You know, he wears, like, fancy shoes, but, you know, he doesn't really get into sneakers. So um, one of my favorite episodes, though, uh, is the episode, uh, there's two of them, one about barbecuing and one about gaming. And so... Uh, those are episodes five and six of the series. But episode five, it's funny because uh, so in the beginning of the episode, he's trying to light his his grill in the backyard with some charcoal and he can't figure out how to do it. And his daughter's berating him and the whole thing. It's pretty funny. Um, but he goes out and he meets these guys like out in the middle of the woods. And they're like, you know, they all look like they're from Duck Dynasty. They all got the big long <laughs> beards and and everything else. And um <laughs> And Jeff Goldblum, being as quirky as he is, he stops and looks at one of the guys, and he's like, "Hey, you ever see that movie Deliverance?" And then he starts going through this the song, you know, he's like, "Like that's where he's at." And <laughs> it's just he's so awkward through the whole thing. It's beautiful, and it, it's it's funny too because he so like he goes through into the gaming episode and he talks about LARPing. He talks about you know, which is for you know those who don't know what that is that's live action role playing. Uh, he talks about esports, and you know he's t- he went to like some big Fortnite can you know gaming convention down in Dallas, and uh, and you know the team that he was kind of interviewing there, well lost, and he's like, okay, we got to get out of here. I think it's my fault that they lost, and he gets all nervous, and uh, it- it's just really entertaining, uh, you know, to kind of watch him because it- it's. Like I said, it's everything you've ever seen in any Jeff Goldblum acted movie. You know, the the hand on the throat while he talks and, uh, uh, you know, and, you know, all the pausing and, and everything else. And it's just if you like Goldblum, this is going to be a great show for you uh, because he goes through all these different topics um, and it's, you know, a variety of t- different things that that, you know, are everyday things for us, like ice cream and jeans and tattooing and riding in a RV or riding a bike and all, you know, I mean, none of these are, are groundbreaking topics, but you know, he, it, it's all from the, 
the the gold bloom perspective and it, it gets really entertaining uh, at times no tina that was not a nice impersonation that was a really really bad bad impersonation i can own up to that uh <laughs> Tim, I I, uh, I just googled him. He, he's sixty eight years old right now, and and yeah. I I have to say he's probably funnier and more quirky now mm-hmm. that than maybe he ever has been in his career, and he's got oh, a long career. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's funny when you think about Jeff Goop Goldblum. There was like a time where he was like the action star, not like yeah. and not like Liam Neeson. Like you think of him as an action, but Independence Day. Jurassic mm-hmm. Park, you know, Jurassic like all Park, the, yeah. he was at the the helm of like these major, major blockbusters. It was summer after summer. It was just gold yeah. bloom, gold bloom, gold bloom. Yeah. It was like uh, I mean, the, the fly is uh, to me the, the the his his version of the fly is one of the greatest. It's one of the greatest performances ever. ever. I, yeah. I also I loved um you know this is probably very early in his career, but I I loved Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Yeah, um, and he's excellent in that. Um, He's he's a very multi talented guy. Yeah, one of the yeah. great things uh, in the the barbecue episode, they're sitting there and they're they're cutting up some meat. And um, no, actually, it was past that. It was there's another point in the in the show. It wasn't when he was talking to the the barbecue people. He was actually moved on from the barbecue people, and he was talking about um, the need for sustainable proteins. And so he was talking to people who are cricket farmers and how they're eating crickets and all these different yeah. things. And the guy gives him a quote, like quotes his line back to him from Jurassic Park about yeah. doing the about the, the line where Goldblum talked about, uh, you know, you, you did all the research, but you didn't see if you should have done it. You know, that, right, that right, line. Right. I, don't rem- I don't remember the line exactly. But, but you never thought, should we? Or something yeah, like that. It's yeah, just the whole like point that. of the book and the movie. That's right. like the, the, the pinnacle so, line. <laughs> so this guy's talking about crickets and he, he spits that line back at Goldblum and he's like, ah, ah. Huh? I see what you did there. You, you did my line. Very, very nice. Very nice. <laughs> one day we'll, one day we'll all be eating crickets. I often wonder to myself, how is it that any one of us at any given time could go eat five dozen chicken wings? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't even make sense to me. I mean, just if you think about it, like we could just nonstop. If you ever yeah. see something about the like oh, hard you know, pass, you know what the I mean. Well, I'm just saying, you ever seen anything about the Vegas casinos? You know, like the food that goes in there. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like, and then you got to think there's people that are starving. I mean, it's right. like, it's, ins- it's insane. It's like, I don't get it. I'm all in on crickets, a little chocolate, whatever. But yeah, no, it's, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. Sounds I think good. it's well worth the watch. I've always wanted to watch it because I have Disney Plus too, and, you know, anything to get a little extra value out of it. But yeah. uh, especially now that I think they charge me more than a dollar. I'll have to check it out. That's, uh, I, I'm definitely interested. I am a huge Jeff Goldblum fan. I, I think I, I, I'm definitely going to put the Norse, the Norseman in, in my front row right here, but that I think yeah. gonna, right, right behind that, I may do Jeff Goldblum. That's great. I hope if other people want, get as much out of this show as we do. <laughs> if you want to see Goldblum get super nervous, there's an episode about tattooing and he, um, does he helps, get one? No, he helps give one. Ah, and no. there's a very trusting person on the tattoo uh, chair. Yeah. So two people I wouldn't take a tattoo from Jeff Goldblum and Pete Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> what was I'll the what was the movie he did with uh with what's his name? The uh the, the British uh comedy guy, um the one shoot, the one about him having a baby with uh oh, is it she's having a baby? Is that the name of the movie? I don't know. I don't know. Guess, I so. uh, anyway, it was he was well, this was a fun that. episode, you guys. Thank you guys. This is so fun. Thank you for that awesome review. Tim, great job. Nice job Tim. Netflix oh, metrics was great. This was just so super all around. Let's see. Wait, we got some comments coming in. It's just t- uh, Oh, hey, uh, Lee, chocolate covered crickets taste like Nestle Crunch. I bet they would. That would be amazing if they would. Nestle Cricket Crunch. I'm all in. I'm all in on that. I'm all in on that. All right, Mr. Bean. I don't remember who mentioned Mr. Bean, but LOL. All right. Thank you, Tina. <laughs> thank you, Lee. Thank you, Tina. Uh, thank you. Uh, Everyone uh, who Simon for stopping by, everyone, everyone who came by, the hundred million people that are watching live right now. Thank you so much, John. Say good night. Good night. How was that? Good. That's pretty good. That was one of the best good nights I think we've ever had. <laughs> yeah. Tim, say good night. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thanks for having me on. Ryan, say good night, my friend. Yeah, good night, guys. You can catch me soon on airplanes to be found uh, all over the country. But for so now, in my den. Zachy Poo. Yeah, good night, everybody. 
I'm Jeff DeWazigan. Thank you guys for joining us once again for Crossing the Streams. We'll be back next Wednesday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Find us on YouTube and on Facebook. We're here every Wednesday crossing some streams. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Crossing the Streams, brought to you by scenesnobs.com and part of the Jeff Dewaskin Show. Your hosts, of course, Jeff Dewaskin, Sal D'Amelio, Bob Phillips, Ron Lippett, and Howard Rosner. Follow us all on the socials, and we'll see you next week and every Wednesday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern. Mark your calendars. We're going live and crossing more streams.